So we're going to demonstrate a ureth urethrocyte sedimentation rate, also known as sed rate and ESR. So we're going to say ESR from moving forward. So this is a very um, crude test that is an indicator of inflammation. And one of the things that you're going to find out on internship is that some smaller labs will still set these up manually. And so then it's not hard to do, but I want to be sure you could do it. So right now, quality control has to be done with every test. And so right now, the, these particular controls, as in any control, you have to follow manufacturer's insert. And so you needed to vortex them, and then you have to roll them, and then she's rolling them through the... Um, with her palms of her hand, just like the uh, insert tells you. And you have to do it according to your standard operating procedure. And so she's going to set up three samples, the control and a patient. And since she's just opening th these reagents, she's going to date, time, and initial them. And that way we know how long these controls are going to be good for again, depending on what the manufacturer insert is telling us. Again, labeling is very, very important. And so when it comes to this particular method, um, we have, you're going to find that they look slightly different depending on the manufacturer. And in the bottom, you're, you're going to see a certain amount of sodium citrate on the bottom. So you need to label them and be very organized. And here I messed up your organization, so I'll let you put it back. So you need to label the container on the outside. And then she's going to take a pipette. Oh, she already has pipettes available. And she's going to pipette. It's about a 1 ml of the blood sample. In this case, it's a QC. And QC is handled just like your patient's samples and they've manufactured it as, as well as they can to mimic. And so she's going to fill it all the way up. It's about 1 ml. Recapping the QC. And then she's going to recap the reservoir. And she's going to make sure she mixes the blood and the chemical that was already into the reservoir. And she's going to go ahead and set up the other ones. And before she actually starts this test, she'll resuspend them one more time. So she's going to make sure she knows what the label of the reservoir is. She's going to make sure she has the right sample or QC to go into the container. And it, it takes about 1 ml to do this test. This one, the thing about this test when we're doing it manually is that once we have the pipette into the reservoir, it takes one hour to do the test. And sometimes nurses and docs want the results in 45 minutes, of which we have to apologize and say, no, we have to wait till the hour before we can read the test. What's nice is we do have analyzers that also do this, and that can be done within about five to ten minutes. And again, this is a, um, a test that's checking for inflammation in our patients. There is a more specific um, test, chemistry test, C-reactive protein. There's actually a more specific indicator of inflammation, but this test is still it's quick and easy and cheap to do. So a lot of physicians still like to 
order it. So again, you have to make sure your reservoirs are labeled and then well mixed. And probably again, the, the next step is going to be the most difficult because when you put the disposable pipette into the reservoir, it takes a certain amount of careful, gentle pressure to get the blood all the way up. Because you're going to be piercing that very top part of the reservoir lid. And so it's a push and twist. And so I really want you to be sure to do it. So push, 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 push. And there's a, an overfill, so it takes care of the extra. And you want to keep going. Twist. It's like a twist and then push it up. Yep. And when you're on internship, your preceptors will give you all sorts of cool hints. So do what makes sense for the facility and your SOP. Twist, 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 all the way up. So this device is on a leveler, so you want to be sure the bubble is in the middle, so this is totally level. And then we just set the timer for one hour. So it's very important that you keep your timer handy. I typically keep it in my pocket because you're doing other things for the hour. And so, but as soon as it beeps, you have to respond and read it because things could really change quickly. So our normal control is about five. Our abnormal control was about 68 and our patient was zero. And so we would read it and record it. And again, because this is a manual effort, a, a, a manual method, we would have to go ahead and input this information into the electronic um, system so that it could get reported. So that's just a simple example of how to do a SED rate.